Well, we all wish Bill Curry a happy birthday. Uh, all that is except this one gentleman who's here today. Well, I certainly wish Coach Curry a losing birthday. Uh, only time will tell whether that happened, but uh, I like Bill personally, and I hope he has good health, but I wish him no good things to happen on the football field. I'm not that good a sport. Curry's team winning the toss. They have deferred. Tennessee will take the ball. Alabama will have the wind at its back for the opening quarter of this game. Philip Doyle with the ball on the tee. So we're going to have that offense-defense confrontation right away. Keep an eye on the guy on the right down there, Brent. That's Carl Pickens. He averages 23 yards a return. Here he comes. Ten. Now just beyond the 20-yard line where he's brought down. And the Volunteers will put it in play after a 17-yard return. Let's take a look now as Sterling Hinton will quarterback the Volunteers here today. His running backs, Chuck Webb is the main focus. Roland Poles, the big fullback in front of him. And the wide men, Terrence Cleveland starting today, along with the reliable Thomas Woods. Hinton sets his backs in the eye and brings Woods in motion. Webb on first down and a tremendous hole in the middle of that defense. And I'm going to tell you something. Watch McCants. Webb just takes on the tackler and runs right over him. He's a red shirt freshman. He's going to his left, the strength of the formation, and watch him get in the hole and take on every tackler. This is the confrontation we were talking about, and I think the young freshman wins the first battle. Second down and four for the Volunteers. And that time, no room for Poles as Steve Webb, number 84 from Holt, Alabama, swats him down. This is one of the finest offensive lines in college football. John Fisher is the anchor. Now, Eric Still, you will soon see in the NFL. Tom Meislinski, the other guard. And the two big tackles, also very talented, McCray and Davis, known as the TVA, along with tight end Mark Adams, the Tennessee Valley Authority. The first pass of the game, Hinton under pressure on the rule, steps out of bounds. Alabama's defense holds, and there's a penalty flag down. Brent, you're looking at number 86, McCants, but it was really 84, Steve Webb, that made that play. He strung it out the length of the field like he was supposed to, kept his outside free, and made Sterling Hinton go all the way to the sideline. Our referee is the veteran Jimmy Harper. Seems like we've seen him at every big game in the South. A big 15-yard personal foul penalty against Alabama. Apparently, there is a push out of bounds late. Here's the guy Let's you want to watch right there. Let's see where the penalty is, but watch Webb, 84. Take on the blocker, keep his outside free, the left side, and string that play to the sidelines. I don't see a penalty in there. Keep it running. There, there it, it is, is right, right there. there. All right, first and 10 as the result of that penalty. Here is Webb on first down, causing the secondary to come up and make the hit. Number 45, number 46, Rodney Helton bringing him down after a three-yard burst. Hey, Rodney Helton was now here the is the back defense, Tim, with Willie Wyatt, the very talented nose tackle. George Thornton and Thomas Rayham are the two tackles. The inside linebackers, and they are both outstanding, led by Keith McCants, whom Tim has told you about. Steve Webb and Spencer Hammond are the two outside linebackers. Webb running wide to the left. Bama springing it out. Just dives toward that first down marker. Left in. He's only 5'10, 197 pounds. Red shirt freshman out of Toledo, Ohio. One of those rare high school phenoms who lives up to the rays, Brent. First and ten for the volunteers. This their opening drive. A penalty very Webb gets nowhere. Van Treese Davis, the inside linebacker, steps in and leads the Bama defense. Davis. 
They play a multiple defense. Watch Davis now, the linebacker, 47. Right there in the middle of your screen. Comes through untouched. Nobody picked him up. And that's what this defense will do. They'll move people around. They always go to the strong side. The strong side linebacker is Van Treese Davis. He'll always go to the tight end side. Second and 10 for Tennessee. Scoreless in the opening period. Hitton's first pass. And he can't get it off as he is sacked by Big Keith McCants, number 86 out of Mobile, Alabama. Brent, they said they wanted to move McCants around today. They wanted to give him some motion. They wanted to get him outside where he could penetrate. It caught Tennessee by surprise. He comes from the outside. They never get a hand on him. You saw Ansler, the fullback, never even got a block on him. That just about evens him up. He was guilty of that penalty out of bounds. And now it is third and 19 for Tennessee. Straight back. Steps up into the pocket. Incomplete, a beautiful move there at the last moment by Ephraim Thomas, number five. Here is Kent Elmore, perhaps the finest punter in college football today. You will certainly see him next year in the NFL. Working against the wind, let's see how high he hangs it. A great punt against that wind. And a superb return out to the 33-yard line by Gene Jokes. A 51-yard punt with a 17-yard return. Is Jokes ready to come back and play in the defensive backfield, Tim? They say Jokes is 95% of what he was when we last saw him in that defensive backfield. When we saw him earlier than that in the offensive backfield, he's not 100%, but he's dangerous as a return man. I don't think we'll see him in the secondary. Alabama's first possession, coming out from their own 33. Hollingsworth throwing to Sanderson on first down to the Tennessee 45-yard line. Craig Sanderson with a 21-yard gain. Alabama showed you play action to the right side. Watch the fake. Now he comes back and it's just a quick slant in. That play is well designed. It's high percentage. It's what they had to do to get Hollingsworth mentally into the game. Hill is the tailback. And this will be his. No, they fake to him. And on the roll, complete to the far side and out of bounds. Marco Battle receiver and Mark Fletcher gets him out of bounds for the Volunteers. So Bill Curry ambushes the Tennessee defense here early. Gary Hollingsworth who started as a sub bringing him up to the line of scrimmage. Kevin Turner is fullback and Murray Hill. They're the wide men and each has caught a pass here this afternoon. They run the fullback trying to get the first down they had a second and two and Kevin Turner is brought down by Marion Hobby an outstanding defensive end this is the offensive line in front of Hollingsworth Roger Schultz Chris Robinette Trent Patterson on the guards and the two tackles Strickland and Chapman the tight end is always used in the Alabama offense Lamond Russell steps in this is third and one and again that Tennessee defense was ready Saran Stacy the ball carrier he is the backup tailback but not much daylight there on third and short the line could not open the hole here that's exactly right watch right here along that line of scrimmage there's no offensive thrust if anything it was the Tennessee defense that established a new line of scrimmage a yard deep in that Alabama backfield you've got to fire off that line and establish those blocks quickly they'll go on fourth and short for Bill Curry stacked up the Tennessee defense stacks him up at the line of scrimmage. Daryl Hardy out of Cincinnati, Ohio, leading the defensive charge. And let's see where they spot it down. 
So we'll have our first measurement here this afternoon. Brent, you know, we talked a lot about that Alabama defense being number one in the league against the rush. But this Tennessee defense is strong as well. They've not given up a rushing touchdown this season. Nobody has scored a touchdown in the first half against the Vols. Be a first down for Bama. They keep it going. Again, we'll watch that thrust of the offensive line. The play is really made by the back. Up and over. Boy, he made it, but not by much. You know, in that offense, Brent, they teach their running backs, the Alabama backs, to follow a specific blocker. Don't run to daylight. Follow a big blocker. Stay right on his hip. Wherever he goes, you go. If the hole gets jammed up, go over top of him. That's what they did. The ball is at the Tennessee 36 yard line on first and 10. This is Bama's first possession. Scoreless in Birmingham. Murray Hill has it faked to him. And the throw by Hollingsworth incomplete inside the 20 yard line intended for Sanderson again. That's a great defensive play by Julian, the free safety. Because Hollingsworth put that ball right where he had to. Low, near the ground, and right to the receiver. Julian just came over and knocked it down at the last second. Tim Hollingsworth fakes extremely well to his backs and freezes the linebackers for just a second. He has been superb at handling the ball here so far. Now he faces a second and ten for Bama. And they will toss to him. Cuts back on the left side and hit hard by Daryl Hardy. And left in. Again, Hardy's another one of those linebackers. We kept talking about McCants. Hardy, 6'3", 215. This is Hardy. Watch, he gets the quick read, skates down the line, stays right with the ball carry. Now come up in that hole, tuck the tail, sky the eyes, and just put him on his back. And down now is the result of that hit. His starting tailback, Murray Hill. Sir Ann Stacy will replace him. And while the injured player is being tended to, we'll take this timeout in Birmingham. Our line were scoreless in the opening quarter. Hollingsworth rolling on the pocket. First down to battle. Out of bounds at the Tennessee 22. Marco Battle, the offensive captain. He was a high school quarterback. They line up strong right. It's just pass blocking up front. Nothing special. But you've got Hollingsworth, who's mobile, and he just throws a quick out pattern. They were playing soft on the corner, and Kelly Days gave him too much room. Stacy picks his way neatly. Close to the 15-yard line before Bradley, Shazan Bradley, brings him down for the Volunteers. The great thing about this was his patience. You see the line fire out. Now watch Suron Stacy. See the stutter step there to read where the backs are going, where the linemen are going, how the hole opens up, and then he kicks it back outside. Second down and about four yards to go for Bama. And he doesn't get much of it this time. He got all he could out of that hole inside the 15-yard line. And it will be a third down. You know what you saw there again, Brent? It's that very defined get a blocker and follow his hip offensive attack of Alabama. Watch him now. It doesn't matter where the hole is. As long as he's coming through there, watch him now. He sees the back in front of him, the lineman in front of him. He gets right on his hip and rides him in. Ball is at the Tennessee 14. They have to get a good yard out of this. And on the road. And a first down as Lamond Russell, the tight end, dives for it and keeps the Bama drive going. They make such great use of the tight end in Bill Curry's offense. Tennessee used to be a 5-2 scheme, but they went 0-5 last year. They changed things up to 4-3. They play a lot of zone. This time they've got the linebacker on the tight end. He just slides out and makes the catch. 
Ball is at the Tennessee 11-yard line on Bama's opening drive. Stacy to the short side of the field breaks a tackle and hammers inside the five-yard line. Whoa, what a run by Saran Stacy. Nobody has scored on this defense this year. Here's the play. It's made in the backfield. Just missed tackles. There's no question about it. He should have been sacked for a loss. Instead, he breaks that tackle of Hobby and gets on downfield for the big game. Hobby had him, Brent. Big Martin Houston checks in at fullback on this second down. Hollingsworth, great fake. Touchdown, Alabama. The number 24, Kevin Turner, a four-yard touchdown pass, and Bama strikes for Coach Curry on its first possession here this afternoon against Tennessee. Philip Doyle's kick on the money. touchdown against this defense all year it's made in the backfield if you're watching the receiver you're watching the wrong guy it's his quarterback he made it all happen with the play action then he hit his leading receiver right there Kevin Turner the fullback his third touchdown 26th catch of the year there against Tennessee Doyle kicks off for the tide and Carl Pickens with that great speed can't find any daylight swarmed all over back by the 15 yard line what an impressive opening drive that was for Alabama they moved 67 yards in 13 plays Turner caught the pass thrown by Hollingsworth Hollingsworth was five of six and more importantly his faking was absolutely brilliant during that drive. Now it is Tennessee's turn to see if they can come right back. Chuck Webb again the feature back. Hit throws. It was low and incomplete. He wanted his favorite wideout, Thomas Woods. A lot of people look at this offense and they say it's one dimensional. Tennessee's only been running the ball. This time they come out with two receivers to the bottom of the screen. The isolated receiver at the top is Woods all by himself. And they just try to throw a hitch to him. They've got to establish the running game, though, Brent. They do not want to go to the passing game yet. Second and 10 for the Volunteers. And now too much time is taken by the Volunteers. Tim, it's a somewhat rattled Tennessee team right now. No question about it. It's a very a dead ball. team, and they do ball appear rattled. Started. You know, when you think about it, this is the first hostile situation they've really come into. Of course, they played out in Pasadena, but that's not like coming in a closed stadium like this. And Coach Major's not happy as he rips off that headset. This is a Tennessee team with a 10-game winning streak, the longest ever under Coach Majors in 12-plus years. Trying to set the screen, and he overthrew Roland Poles, the fullback. Now, Hinton is 0 for 3. Young man out of Passaic, New Jersey. Getting the signal. Sent in from the sideline, and Greg Amsler checks into his backfield. Duke, one of the teams that Tennessee defeated this year. They run the draw play, and Alabama. Left 
led by noseman Willie Wyatt brings him down. Big Willie is some load for the center. I want to tell you something. Alabama is actually challenging Tennessee to throw. The Volunteers showed three receivers to one side that time, and Alabama still just loaded up and waited for the draw. They're saying, go ahead and throw it. See if you can complete it. Kent Elmore in for his second punt. And working against the wind has really proven difficult for Tennessee here in the opening quarter. Jelks inside the 50. He has great speed, and he's down to the 40-yard line. Nine-yard return, but Alabama with great field possession for its second possession. Plenty of time remaining in the opening quarter, so they have six minutes with that wind at their back. It's helmet. He went in and got the save and scored the, the winning touchdown. Tim, the ball is at the Tennessee 39 with Bama leading by a touchdown. Hollingsworth didn't fool him that time. Big Daryl Hardy said, I'm coming right in on the quarterback. The play fake will not freeze me. Hardy was coming from the get-go. He didn't have to worry about a fake. Watch this. He's coming right now, and he moves to the outside to get that jump. Nobody picks him up. Matter of fact, Hollingsworth didn't see him until the last second. Peripherally, he saw him and went down. Safe play. Second and 17. Because of that seven-yard loss, and Hollingsworth shows the shotgun formation for the first time for Alabama. They frequently use this. And then the inside handoff to Stacy. And he busts a tackle before he is finally forced out of bounds by Marion Hobby on the near side. Watch the way that Tennessee fills on this. He wants to go to the inside. Instead, he has to bounce to the outside because of the contained man out on the outside. That's Henson, number 28, made four set play. He gets a good block out here, but that play's already ended. Alabama gets five of the seven yard loss back, so we're facing a third and 12. Out of the shotgun, the fake of the inside handoff. Hinesworth to muscle the tight end. He is out of bounds at the 30, just short of a first down. Daryl Hardy got all the way to the near side to get him out of bounds. Russell, 6'1", 213 pounds. He's just going to drag across the middle, try to get lost underneath the zone. The zone just goes back. They get into their hook areas, and he comes way underneath the linebackers. Nothing fancy about it. It's high percentage. But, Brent, that's what they want to do with Hollingsworth. They want to keep things high percentage so he can just use that strong arm. He's a pitcher on the baseball team, middle relief guy. Pitched a one-hitter against Alcorn State. No question about the strength in that arm. Another fourth down for Bama. One yard to go. Stuffs him. Volunteers ball is Shazam Bradley. They should call him Shazam on a play like that. 6'1", 246 pounds. Started as a freshman. In his short career, he's played nose guard, outside linebacker, defensive end, middle linebacker. Look at number 40 there. He just fills in the hole and gets gone, dives and makes the, cat, the tackle. That should lift the Volunteers' spirits. A first and ten with Andy Kelly now in at quarterback. So a change for Tennessee. Johnny Majors will try Kelly. It's that toss sweep with Webb. And Bama is ready. Van Fries Davis, 47, delivers the initial blow. Kelly, a sophomore, 6'3", 200. Getting the signal relayed from the sideline this is not his first action now Brent as a matter of fact as they came out of spring spring practice Johnny Major said Kenton and Kelly both played well neither one stepped forward so both could start they will send three wide receivers to the left and Kelly quickly crosses that little slip screen but Pickens with a knee on the ground when he caught it That's a freshman error, a critical error.
Watch Pickens' knee now. He's just a freshman. The ball's thrown low, but he can't put that knee on the ground. He's either got to go down with his hands and make the catch or just get it out of bounds, let it hit, and let it go. A third down and 13-yard situation for Kelly. Penalty flag goes down on the retreat by Kelly, who throws incomplete at the near side. Kelly's incomplete. And hitting for Morgan, flag on the play. Oh. Yeah, let's go. Dead ball. Ball start, illegal motion on offense. That's the second play, time today. Down. You know what? I think I think McCants caused that. McCants looked like he was going to blitz, started dancing up near the line. Kelly was looking at him, and I think somebody jumped. Watch number 86, McCants, and see if he doesn't cause this. Here he is right here. Now watch him. He's coming. He's showing blitz. He dances up by the line, and they jump. He's making them antsy out there. They're a little bit concerned about that big guy. Throws far side incomplete as Ephraim Thomas again does it defensively. What a great play by Thomas. Watch him up on the corner. Just gives ground, goes into his back pedal. Well, actually, he turned his back. He shouldn't do that, but he makes up ground quickly with his speed. He's got 4-5 speed. Never turn your back. you got to open up like a gate. So again, it is the busy Kent Elmore in the punt for the Volunteers. Jelks lets it bounce. It takes a Tennessee hop and goes out of bounds at the 34-yard line. A 40-yard punt for as Tennessee goes three and out for the second straight time. If you look at the two respective schedules, Tennessee has beaten a stronger group. They went out to the Rose Bowl to knock off UCLA. Don't forget Earl Bruce is the Colorado State coach. There's Alabama, a big win over Mississippi because of the way they accomplished it. Five touchdown passes for Hollingsworth, who has thrown one here today. Off the delay, he runs Turner, the fullback, straight ahead on first down. Two-yard gain, making it second and eight. That is the time remaining in the opening quarter with Tim Brandt. I'm Brent Musburger. Battle of Dixie, the third Saturday in October. Alabama seven, Tennessee nothing. They think again to Stacy. Hollingsworth throws complete for another Alabama first down. And it was one of the best names in all of college football. Prince Wembley, number 32. Some of the all-time classic names have come out of this league. Prince Wembley, Lawyer Tillman, Richmond Flowers. Again, it's the play action that makes this go. See, he just puts the ball on his hip, comes back. They're in a basic zone defense, and they're just sliding into the seam. There's nothing fancy about it. They're challenging Tennessee and say, give us something more. And the 14-yard gain gives him the first down at midfield, again from the shotgun. Hollingsworth drops off the screen pass, and Bama with another first down. So Sirhan Stacy gains 13 yards on that reception. 13 yards, first down, Alabama. The worst thing that's happened to Tennessee thus far is Hollingsworth has gotten a lot of confidence early. Johnny Majors facing a hot quarterback. Again on first down, using the play for near side, another completion, and battle is run out of bounds. Kelly Days with covers. Well, we got something else brewing, so let's check in with Greg Gumbel. Brent at Michigan State, big game in the Big Ten. Illinois' Jeff George goes up top to Mike Bellamy for 53 yards. That's the longest pass allowed by Michigan State this season. It set up a one-yard touchdown pass by Jeff George, and Illini leads Michigan State 7-0 in the first quarter. 
All right, Greg, here at 7 nothing Alabama. What a rope George throws. He's a fine-looking thrower. And here, Hollingsworth setting the screen on the short side with his tight end, Russell. Russell found an alley. Daryl Hardy, who is Mr. Everywhere for the Volunteers, finally getting him out of bounds. But Bama has rolled to the Tennessee 15. Backside screen, watch 81, Russell. He'll make the contact, then he'll drift back behind his blockers. The play is made here, though. Watch him run around Bradley. Just runs around him, then takes it upfield. Hollingsworth is 10 of 11 now for 106 yards. He has thrown one touchdown pass already in this game. And remember, here's a quarterback who burned Ole Miss with five touchdown passes. Alabama scored 62 that day. That's the distance that Bama needs for a first down. Brent, last year when Tennessee was 0-5, Johnny Majors made a change. He took Doug Matthews, his offensive coach, and put him on the defense. Matthews went over, and the first thing he did was simplify the defense. He went to a basic 4-3 scheme. They play a lot of zone. He thought simplicity was the key and let these guys just play football. Well, unfortunately, when you play a team like Alabama, when they are very skilled and high percentage and just pick you apart, it's costing them right now. There's your Terps are down there. The Duke. With Houston battering right straight ahead. They have loaded up the eye that time. Mark Moore with the stop for the Tennessee Volunteers. So Bama moves the chains again. And that certainly gives you an indication as to how this game has gone. Alabama with nine first downs in this game to only two for Tennessee. So the tide continuing to move the chains here. Using Turner, the fullback, and they are keeping this volunteer defense off balance. James Wilson with the tie. Alabama so far today has featured the pass on first down. That time, no fake. They give to the short man the fullback, and the quick burst was there. This is spectacular play calling by Alabama so far. You be the linebacker on this play, though. This is a big offensive line, 274 pounds. They wall off the right side, and Turner just cuts it back inside, away from the pursuit. This field has a high crown on it, too. He was running downhill. Second and two for Alabama. Hollingsworth with all the time in the world of the end zone. You know what, Brent? He had broken containment, too. He didn't take his eyes off the receiver. Had he had just glanced to the right, it was wide open for a touchdown. He could have run it. Watch the contain man now. The contain man is right here, number 88. See, he gets outside the contain man. If he turns it up, he had the corner. He could have gone in and scored. And the underneath man appeared to be open in that replay, too, Tim. So now facing a third and two for Hollingsworth and the tie. Bowling to the right. Just before he steps out of bounds, he throws the ball incomplete. He wanted Stacy that time, but there was good coverage by the Volunteers. Smart play, though. He put it down as far on the ground as he could, right into the corner, so if he missed him, it would be incomplete. Rather than just throwing it up in the stands, he just threw a good pass that was either incomplete or it would be a great catch. Big defensive stand by the Volunteers. And Philip Doyle, the 6'1 junior, also a baseball player. Very reliable with the wind at his back. Drafted by the White Sox in 1987 out of high school. Perfect from inside 40 yards this year. So the 22-yard field goal. Causes the neon to flicker again on the scoreboard as Alabama opens up a 10-0 lead on Tennessee. And the Volunteers looking for a little offense here this afternoon. Well, how do you like it so far? I love SEC football. You know, we've been talking about the number one rushing team being Tennessee, the number one rushing defense being Alabama. But Alabama's also the SEC's number one scoring offense, averaging 31 points a game. And they come out here firing. Worth looks brilliant too. He went in against Kentucky and he comes out after the first series and the trainer says, What can we do for you? He says, Can you give me 20 pounds? <laughs> that is 
This is the start of our doubleheader here on CBS. USC and Notre Dame coming your way from South Bend. That's always a fine game. The Trojans have uh, struggled. Who do you like in that game against Notre Dame? Trojans had a lot of trouble in this decade. It's tough to go against Notre Dame. They've got all pistons firing right now. Everything is solid. Lou Holtz will have these guys ready for Southern Cal. Well, the volunteers are going to try it again, and Terrence Cleveland will haul this one back. And Lorenzo Ward. My man ahead. Whammy. <laughs> they call him Whammy. He's named after a TV commercial, a monster that comes up. His name Whammy. He's a walk-on. This guy just loves to play football, just throws his body around. He asked for a chance. He said, hey, coach, all I want to do is play. Well, he plays all right. This is all he plays, special teams. But watch him come down, just reckless of pen and throw his head in there. And wham, down goes. Oh, you got to like it. Whammy. Whammy's a cartoon monster. Andy Kelly. Stays in as the quarterback with the final seconds ticking away here in the opening quarter and they will run the fullback and that is Amsler who had checked into the game. Well the story of this game has certainly been so far the Alabama defense and Gary Hollingsworth. Bama leading by 10 points at the end of the first quarter and college football will return after this message and a word from your local station here unbeaten having yielded only an average of 10.2 points a game and already Bama has stunned them for 10 points in the opening quarter Kelly tar side complete and Woods with his first reception of the game and perhaps Kelly now can rally the volunteers through the air that's a 13 yard gain As confident as Sterling Hinton is it usually, he was shaking today, so Kelly comes in, steps right up, and just throws a quick out pattern. Nothing fancy to it, but he made the connection. Well, Tennessee with a chance to get past their 35 for the first time this day, and again, they go to Woods, who is working on the far side, and that is John Mangum defensively, who got him out of bounds over there. So this right now is the best field position that the volunteers have enjoyed in this game. They have moved out to their own 45 yard line. Syracuse on the comeback after that big loss to Penn State last week. Here is Webb and nowhere. The defense is really focused in on Steve on I should say on Webb right now and that was Steve Webb who made the hit so it was Webb against Webb no relation and he brings him down the play was actually made by Byron Holbrooks he doesn't make the tackle but he made the penetration which got Webb off his stride watch this big number 79 comes in right there just blew his his blocker away and came in cleanly Anton Davis barely got a hand on him. Kelly throwing far side complete again to Thomas Woods with John Mangum over there. Kelly showing a strong arm to the outside. You've got to deliver that ball with a little mustard, and Kelly has. Brent, they call Woods Mr. Clutch. He had 58 catches last year. That was a school record. He only needs 23 more to break the all-time career mark set by Tim McGee. So now they've gone to him three times in a row, and it's made a big difference offensively. Very steady receiver. Doesn't possess that breakaway speed of a Willie Galt, a great track star out of Tennessee. Kelly now rolling to the left, playing with some confidence. He puts it away because his receivers were covered. And it will bring up a decision for Johnny Majors. This is going to be a fourth and two. He's down by 10. And he'll go with his punter. Kent Elmore. He'll play it conservatively here near midfield, not wanting to give Bama good field position. Remember now, Tennessee with the wind at its back this quarter. So let's see if Elmore can bury the tide. Jokes, signals fair catch, it's a bluff. And it goes into the end zone, so it'll come out on the 20. That's not what Elmore wanted to do in that situation. 
So when you come back, it'll be Bama ball, first and ten, and they lead it by ten. Nobody want to run damn screen, man. It's a first and ten coming out from their own 20-yard line. A little bit of a delay with Stacy, who now inherits the workload as Murray Hill has gone to the X-rays, gone to the hospital for X-rays. Walker bringing him down. Continuing to lead Michigan State, and now Duke has opened it up a little bit on Maryland. Boston College and Navy still scoreless in another ACC game. Ivy League. And here in the SEC, the two leaders with Alabama holding the upper hand and the tight end Russell with that completion and run out of bounds by number 87, Daryl Hardy. What an active defensive player he has been again. Watch Russell now. The play action, they're in a basic zone. Play action freezes them. He comes out, just slides out. Again, it's a high percentage pass. Nothing fancy. Actually, Russell did a superb job on Hardy that time. He came out and initiated contact, quickly drew back, and got open as a receiver. Well done by the Bama tight end. On the roll, the red-hot Hollingsworth has got another receiver on the far side, and that is Marco Battle. He is 12 of 15 already. This man named Hollingsworth. And when the season began, it was Jeff Dunn, Tim, who was the quarterback. Well, Jeff Dunn was a highly recruited athlete out of high school. He came in here. He was 15 and 0 as a prep star. Won his first three games, but he got hurt. Hollingsworth comes in. He never plays. He played behind Vince Sutton, Jeff Dunn, Mike Shula, Billy Ray. Never got a chance. But he was a high school player too. Threw for 2,300 yards. Stacy to the short side and nothing doing and still he managed to get a gain out of it before Hobby could bring him down. There didn't seem to be any daylight over there. You know, it was Hollingsworth performance that really accelerated the healing process on Dunn. They said he'd be at six to eight weeks. He could play today. Second down and seven. They run the draw with Stacy. Very calmly picking his way closer to that first down. Hardy and Ernest Fields bring him down defensively. West Virginia up a touchdown on the Bearcats in the opening quarter. And Rutgers kicks a field goal. Stacy has carried nine times in relief of Murray Hill for 31 yards. Can he hold up? And that would be the big question for the Bama coaching staff right now. Straight ahead power football, and did he get it? Martin Houston, the big fullback, and he was thrust back by the volunteer defense, and you can see he did not as the punt team pours onto the field. Now, punting has been a problem for Alabama. Bill Curry, very concerned right now about Bill Smith. His left hand with the glove was broken earlier this year. He's had a couple of punts blocked. He takes his time getting it off. Tennessee not coming after it. They're going to set a, re a return, and it's Thomas Woods at the 24 to the 30. Just short of the 35-yard line. An 11-yard return for Woods. And so Tennessee trying to get up on that scoreboard. Mike Smith, make it here on the third Saturday of October at Legion Field in Birmingham, it's 10 nothing, Bama. It's only cash, but you can get anything you want there, ribs and best white bread in town. I think you guys ought to have it catered at halftime, Brent. I think Webb is heading right for the front door on this run. Brought out of bounds here on the near side, and that was Steve Webb who gets him out of bounds again. That place is going so strong that they got an 800 number, a toll-free number that you can call for. It. Yeah, but I'll tell you, if Big John is in there cooking, if he wants to be the MVP, he'd be out right now sending us some ribs for him. <laughs> <laughs> Second down. 
Webb with only 17 yards on seven carries. And remember, he spoke up this week, saying that Tennessee was going to move the ball against Alabama here this afternoon. Incomplete. John Mangum, the veteran safety man out of McGee, Mississippi, knocks that one away from Thomas Woods. the ribs right there huh? An old big John sitting close by keeping an eye now that that guy should be on the all Madden team <laughs> he, he should be the team cook okay oh he can do that no question about it you know Bear Bryant used to go in there and get some ribs Ray Perkins used to send 40 pounds of ribs over to the Bear Bryant Hall for the players third down and nine yards to go for Kelly Swing pass out, hits his safety valve man. First and 10 and into Alabama territory. Greg Emsler, number 47, with a 20 yard burst. And that's the best offensive play of the game so far for Tennessee. No question about it. And the reason it works so well is because he holds on to the ball to the very last second. He looks downfield, waits, now throws it out there. Nobody picks up the Iceman, the little slide back out of the backfield. And Emsler just takes it up to an open field all the points so far have been scored with the wind at Bama's back now a timeout by Kelly it's in the first half so coaches and quarterbacks will frequently use their timeouts early where a coach doesn't want to see a timeout used early is in the second half of a game but here Kelly who was uncertain when he came up to the line we'll go over and talk with Johnny Majors and his coaching staff and we'll take a break and come right back Six for 51 yards. He's hit Woods three times. Under pressure, drops the screen off beautifully. The alley is open, and Greg Emsler again takes it down that far sideline with Mangum getting him out of bounds. A 24-yard gain and a perfectly executed play, letting the rush come in early. Watch the way the linemen here get their initial hit and then bounce to the outside to form the convoy. Watch this, see? They just slide out there. He just dumps it over. Amsler takes it. Now he's got all these guys, one, two, three, four blockers in front of him. First and 10 for Tennessee. The ball inside the Bama 25-yard line. Stepping to the outside is Webb. And now Tennessee starting to rule. Lee Osment bringing him down. The adjustments at the line of scrimmage, and Webb took this one on outside. This offensive line averages 285 pounds. That's bigger than the San Francisco 49ers, but this time he just cuts outside because Alabama gets all tied up with the linemen. Everybody's inside. He bounces to the outside the open field. So the 10 yard run by Webb, his longest of the game so far. Ball inside the Bama 15. They have pitched to him and swing him wide. Close to the goal line. Boy, they found something now, Brent. They're hitting the corners and they're hitting them hard. This is McCants, the linebacker. Everybody's inside again. The play goes outside. But you see how they fold block? They just set that fold block up and cut the linebacker's pursuit. And they're going to the outside now. If they can cut that pursuit off from Alabama, they're going to have some big daylight coming. And they've had it this far in this series. First and goal, the ball at the Bama two-yard line. Out of the power eye, Poles is stood up at the goal line. It'll be second and goal. Same play, though, in the same daylight. Johnny will get right through that hole. Boy, that's not easy to do. Even you said stood him up. That's right. He's 251 pounds, but watch in here the pursuit. Oh, my. Looked like Chris Gardner got there first. He got some help from Mangum. Mangum's only 174, took on a 250-pounder. Touchdown, Tennessee. Greg Emsler over the top. Burke 
attempt to pull the volunteers to within three points of Alabama here in the first half. Bill Curry's defense will have to regroup because Johnny Major's offense has found a way. It's a three point game and we're coming right back. From Kelly to Amsler, who scored. Jokes and Stacy are back deep, and this is Jokes. To the 25 yard line. Well, at the conclusion of today's college football broadcast, we'll select a Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. Chevrolet donates a $1,000 scholarship to the General Scholarship Fund of both Alabama and Tennessee. Alabama moved out to a 10 0 lead in the first quarter. Now Tennessee has scored, and all the points have scored with the wind at the back of the respective team. Bama moving into that wind now, which is blowing at about 10 to 12 miles an hour, at least before the game. Hollingsworth with a play fake, incomplete to the near side. Sanderson is intended receiver. You make an excellent point about that wind. When you and I were down there yesterday, the players thought, hey, it's supposed to die down tomorrow. But we were getting blown all over the field then. It has died down somewhat. But all those points, as you mentioned, are going with the wind. It's tough to go into it. It's a force. Hollingsworth is 12 of 16 for 116 yards and a touchdown. From the shotgun, the inside shuffle to Stacy. Big hole. Stacy breaks free at midfield. They won't touch him. So out, Stacy explodes. point it is blocked the block of an extra point which could prove huge as this game continues to unfold so a 75 yard touchdown by Stacy and Curry is furious about the blocked extra point he knows how important that is in a game like this Officially, this is a pass play on this sort of inside off the shotgun. Hollingsworth to Stacy. It's as safe as you can go. If he drops it, it's incomplete. You're right. They pull the guard. They shuffle pass it to him. Very high percentage play. He cuts it up inside. And great call. He's going. So is our win theory. Moment of high for Alabama, and suddenly a moment of low as Charles McCray, an offensive tackle used on that kick team, gets it blocked. Woods runs up to the 12. And near the 30-yard line, let me check that. That was Terrence Cleveland with the 18-yard return, number four, not number five. But you were right about McCray with the block, and he also had a blocked field goal at Auburn. He's six foot eight. He was a former nose guard. They moved him over to left tackle. 16 to 7. Alabama leading Tennessee. There's the man who blocked the extra point. Member of the TVA. This is well, big hole in the middle. Out to the 46-yard line, a 16-yard rump. Tennessee able to have it any way they want from scrimmage right now. It's getting exciting now. It's like a track meet. Big offensive line this time shows a little bit of adversity. Watch, they pull their guard, they come on out. Look at the agility on that offensive line, and then all Webb has to do is follow that big hole. You could have gotten through that one, Brent. <laughs> Someone had carried. 
Run web on the draw. Spencer Hammond bringing him down for the tide. Of course, Webb must carry the burden because of the fact that Reggie Cobb has been kicked off the Tennessee team permanently. Cobb reportedly failed a drug test. And Johnny Majors kicked him off the team. So now it is Webb who has begun to carry the load here this afternoon. Kelly. Complete and almost caught after it was deflected by Hammond. Spencer Hammond, 6'2", 230-pound linebacker from Rome, Georgia, gets back into his hook area. He's reading the back out of the backfield right away. Now he slides in between the two receivers and just goes after the football. Goes up, gets it at its highest point. It's good zone coverage that time by Hammond. Amsler is now the fullback. He has been the main man receiving for Kelly. Kelly hits the open man. On the far side, Alvin Harper. And it's a first and 10 for Tennessee. They keep the drive alive as Kelly hits a 19-yarder on third down. Hey, Brent, watch number 50 right there. That's Miss Linsky. He comes back out of there to protect the quarterback and throws the block up at the top of the screen, which allows Kelly the time to make that throw. First catch of the day by Alvin Harper, number 81. Mangum making the hit. Kelly changing the call at the line of scrimmage. The ball inside the Bama 35. Webb, and he is taken head on by George Thornton. All 293 pounds of George Thornton. Well, at Legion Field, Alabama striking in the opening quarter. Turner with a touchdown pass from Hollingsworth, and then Doyle added a field goal to make it 10 to nothing before Tennessee came back on Amsler scoring for the one yard line. Then Stacy bolting 75 yards, but the extra point blocked, and now Tennessee with a second and 10. Kelly over the middle, intercepted in the goal. Intercepted by Thomas. Down at the 10 yard line. Not certain where he was on the field for just a moment. So electing to finally bring it out instead of kneeling down where it would have been a touchback. But he wasn't sure how the officials would rule on it and of course he's just an inexperienced player but it's a huge play by him and coach curry greeting him on the sideline as he comes off he's made three big plays in that secondary today it was a bad read by kelly his tight end was wide open adams adams was wide open instead he goes to the deep man pickens and he threw into coverage turner the fullback for a couple of yards. That is the third interception of the season for Thomas and the third big play that he's made in that secondary today. He's deflected a couple of passes. Now he intercepts one. Inside of six minutes, Alabama 16, Tennessee 7. This is the first time since 1973 these two teams have come into this game unbeaten. Ran 75 yards the last time he touched the ball. He is stacked up by Rodgers and Bradley this time. And the second half of our doubleheader will be at South Bend. USC and Notre Dame. Brent, it's fun to watch the little intricacies of this offense. Homer Smith, the offensive coordinator, tries to dictate to the defense, align the defense with his formations, move them around. Like last time, he moved his tight end from one side to the other to see what defense they were in. Hollingsworth, with plenty of time, throws the swing to the fullback, and he is close to the first down. Hayworth making the hit on Turner. And this will depend entirely on where they spot the ball, and it is not close enough. Alabama will have to punt. Now, 
this should give Tennessee good field position. Remember, Bill Smith has had a couple of punts blocked this year. He's standing inside his own five-yard line. But again, the volunteers elect to set a return with the wind at their back. Takes almost a neutral hop. And it'll be Tennessee's ball at about the 47-yard line. Well, if Bill Curry and Bama can escape this one, they still have a tough one at Penn State and down at Baton Rouge. At home, they play Mississippi State, Southern Miss, and then they go to Auburn. Normally, the Auburn-Alabama game is played here. Tennessee, a somewhat easier schedule. I know we throw that term around loosely, but they still have to go to Baton Rouge next week in a game at, at Ole Miss, but they get Jerry Faust and Akron in between, and then they close up with Kentucky and Vanderbilt. We have an injured player down on the field. That is Houston Thomas, a Tennessee linebacker who was shaken up on punt coverage that time. So while he's being tended to by the Tennessee staff, we'll take this break and come right back of what appears to be a left ankle injury their best starting field position of the day and that is the man who has really been the workhorse Greg Amsler since coming in off the bench Keith McCants taking him off but Tim not only has Amsler run the ball for the touchdown but he has been great as a wide receiver outside and blocking as well you know they had to get a little shot in the arm Webb came in and wasn't doing much here's a hurry up offense and surprise play they slip it outside and Carl Pickens they try to find him an alley and actually Alabama reacted rather right quickly to that they get their first down on it with a seven yard gain but that one could have broken free so Johnny said he had some new wrinkles today and there's one of them Webb Number 44, back into the backfield. All of the down at 36-yard line. And Webb tripped up as he got past the line of scrimmage. And Steve Webb, the junior from Holt, Alabama, tripping him up. Brent Chuck Webb, in his first seven carries today, got only 17 yards. In his last five carries, he's had 44 yards. So the Tennessee Valley Authority, that offensive line, starting to wake up and open some holes. Second down and long yardage here for the Volunteers. Kelly and down he goes and the ball comes free. Tennessee appeared to fall on it, but it's going to be ruled an incomplete pass. Spencer Haywood coming from the blind. I say Haywood. Spencer Hammond coming from the blind side delivered the blow. Spencer Haywood, he would he would love that. He showed the agility of a Haywood, I'll tell you that. Hammond slam dunked him, though I will say that. Watch the left side of your screen, 44. See him there, watch the pursuit, just blows the blocker away, chases the quarterback all the way, across the field, and knocks it loose. I'm not so sure that that ball was coming forward. Thankfully, we won't delay to find out. Third down. Down the middle, touchdown, Tennessee! Anthony Morgan, a 32-yard scoring strike. How about those volunteers? Splits the uprights. And now it is 16-14. And isn't Bill Curry wishing that his extra point a moment ago had been good too? He's now sitting on a two rather than a three-point lead. 
and trying to rally his troops on the far sideline. The Tennessee offensive line has been great on run blocking. They've been criticized for pass blocking. This time they hold everybody out. Kelly still puts the ball up for grabs, but I want you to watch Morgan. Great coverage out here by Manga. Morgan just blocks him out with his body. Gets his body between the defender and the ball, goes up and gets it at its highest point, and there's the touchdown. Oh, watch Andy Kelly, sophomore out of Dayton. He got leveled, but he knows it's a touchdown. That's right. We did it. We're bad. And Burke with the ball on the tee to kick it off for Tennessee. The Volunteers have roared back with two touchdowns in the second quarter. Wind blowing the ball off the tee. And Jokes is at the left side. He's number 22. And they're going to bring it to Jokes at the one. And not get back to the 20 yard line. Mark Fletcher leads the coverage downfield for Tennessee. Some pressure now on Hollingsworth and the Bama offense. Alabama first and 10 from his own 18. So with their best field position of the day, Tennessee moves to a touchdown in five plays and uses only one minute on the clock. Inside of three minutes now in the first half, they fake the toss. Hollingsworth to Sanderson. A first down for Bama. Oh, is that set up nicely? He just runs the waggle, what they call a waggle. All the motion goes to the right side, fakes the pitch, kind of rolls to the left and hits his man out there. Watch this, and watch how he just sets it up. He'll come out here, give him a little fake, fake the pitch, and then go out by himself to the left side. Again, they're in a zone. He just throws it in the seam. Nicely done. Alabama, 16. Tennessee, 14. 13 more yards. First and ten at the Bama 30-yard line. Stacy. Time remaining, first half. In case you just joined us, Murray Hill was shaken up early in the game. He's the lead tailback for Alabama. He has gone to a hospital here to have his ribs x-rayed. And Hollingsworth has completed 15 of 19 for 208 yards and two touchdowns. Under pressure, gets this one off alertly. He hits Charlie Abrams, one of his tight ends, improvising that pass. And it will be third and short for Bama. Worth is very poised, isn't he? Just very much in control. After he struggled, Brent, last week against Southwest Louisiana, he went up to Bill Curry and he says, Coach, I was doing too many interviews last week. Can you keep him away from me? So he says, All right, I'll shelter you. Didn't let him talk to anybody this week, and he looks very composed, very poised. The pressure swinging away from it again, and throwing near side. It's Sanderson. Craig Sanderson with a defender. Preston Warren, who is a standout, hanging all over him. Sanderson holds on to the ball, a 12-yard gain, and another first down. Watch Hollingsworth spin away from Marion Hobby. Hobby comes through. See him up there, number 90? He just spins right around, keeps his vision, sees the man outside. Here comes Sanderson. Working inside again, using that body inside the defender. Warren, and he makes the catch. And Alabama uses its first timeout 
of the afternoon. Hollingsworth over to the far side to huddle with Coach Curry's coaching staff. And a reminder that coming up at halftime, the Provincial College Football Report with Greg Gumbel. Prince Wembley, number 32, trotting out of the field with Hollingsworth. A little over a minute remaining in the first half, and Bama leading the Volunteers by 2, 16, 14. It's a 2 because Alabama missed, fired on an extra point, which was blocked. So now on a first and 10, Hollingsworth under pressure. Drops it off again to a safety valve, and Stacy bringing it out of bounds here on the near side. Daryl Hardy pursuing the quarterback. This guy's an ice cube. Watch Hardy. Hardy's number 87. He comes in. He's all over Hollingsworth. Hollingsworth still has the presence of Miles. Say, oh, I'm going the other way. Brings it up and hits his receiver. Well, Hardy with 10 tackles, a sack, and several pressures already in this game. Magnificent game defensively for Hardy so far. From the shotgun. A diving reception, but out of bounds. Incomplete. Greg Sanderson saying that it should have been ruled complete here on the near sideline. What a fine control receiver Craig Sanderson is. This is awfully close to being inbound. Sanderson, you're right, has control, drags those feet behind him. Watch his left foot. In college, you only need one foot in. I think what they ruled is he didn't have possession. Now a third down for Bama. Turner, the fullback, also an excellent receiver. Over the middle and complete to Stacy. First down at the Tennessee 17-yard line. 22 yards. Hollingsworth to Stacy. They have two timeouts left, and they will use one of them right now. They'll stop the clock at 46 seconds. Boy, he's methodical. He's efficient. Watch him step up into this pocket here. Here comes all the pressure. He comes right back up in the middle to the pocket and finds Saran in the middle. He knows where all his receivers are at all times, has great vision, great poise. He knew the pressure was coming from the outside. He stepped to the inside, the middle, and saw Saran. Majors wants the defensive team to come over. The Bama crowd hoping to get at least, at least a field goal with 46 seconds to go out of this. And certainly, most of all, they would love to see a touchdown. They've worked this clock extremely well. 46 seconds left. They know they're within field goal range now. Watch Hollingsworth go to the, the end zone. Stacy Saran, four catches, 118 yards, and a touchdown. He has been the hot receiver. First and 10 for Bama. The ball on the Tennessee 17, 46 seconds, and a timeout remaining. Pump fake. Wanted Sanderson and threw it out of the end zone. He was beautifully covered that time by Preston Warren, the junior from Knoxville. He's a great defensive back. It's a good call, though, Brent. You want to go for the end zone there. First down, 40 seconds. Now you back them up. Now you can work something underneath, see what's available. But you want to make them think touchdown right away. You want to make those defensive backs loosen up, play soft, and back up and think end zone. Curry studying that clock. 40 seconds left. Hollingsworth. Throws this one out of bounds and stops it again at the 36 second mark. What he likes to see is a quarterback not make a mistake in that situation. Get the ball out of bounds and stop the clock if the man is covered. Well, and that's been a concern too. They're plus three in the turnover ratio, but Hollingsworth has six interceptions and six touchdowns, so he has been throwing it to the defensive guy occasionally. 
the Alabama staff has to figure that Doyle can kick a field goal from near this point. They have been trying to get the touchdown so far. This time, they pick up some yardage over the middle with Turner blasting inside the 10. This is going to be close to a first down. The clock still running. Now it is stopped at the 22-second mark. Daryl Hardy is back defensively. It is a first down. A big first down because with 22 seconds and a timeout left, they can again go for the end zone. But instead, Hollingsworth just chucks it out here to stop the clock and two seconds run out. He had a free shot at the end zone if he'd have wanted to take it that time, Tim. No question about it. I'm not sure he knew that the clock stopped to move the change. You mentioned it. It stopped at 22 seconds. I don't know why he was throwing it out. But the best point was made about we were talking about being in Doyle's range. Go for the end zone. Loosen him up. And see, then he came underneath to Turner because you already softened the zone. Well, the importance of this game you can tell simply by looking at the SEC standings. The Sugar Bowl prize awaits the winner of the conference. No Alabama or Tennessee team has won the SEC after losing this game. It's 16-14, Alabama ahead by two points. Alabama still with a timeout remaining. You know, one of the things, uh, the college players watch the NFL, and to get the clock stopped frequently, you've got to quickly chuck it out of bounds in that situation. In a college game, when there's a first down, the clock stops automatically. Exactly. It doesn't start until the chains are set again. So he had time to, to audibleize or get a signal from Curry, whatever he wanted to do. He did not have to throw it away. They'll use the shotgun on this second and goal. Hollingsworth with plenty of time. No pressure and incomplete. One of his tight end, Russell. Julian was the defensive back. 15 seconds. Russell had a shot at this, too, because of all the time. This was a coverage play. All right, everybody's covered. Now, finally, there's his tight end comes open and should have made that catch. Right through his hands. Now Sanderson, who has held on to everything he's touched, comes down to the near side. 15 seconds, inside to Stacy. This time, short of a touchdown. As Mark Moore makes a touchdown saving tackle. And Alabama forced to use its final timeout. The ball is at the two. All right, Tim, you be the coach. You've got eight seconds left. I'd go for the field goal. If you go for it and they stop you there, that's a big advantage for Tennessee going into that locker room. Remember, they blocked his last one right in the middle. He did not get it up. And McCray was able to get through. They set the swinging gate. It'll be a 19-yard attempt. The pressure the last time came right down the middle. Jeff Wall is the holder. This one right through. And Alabama leading 19 to 14. We'll come back for the final five seconds in just a moment. Alabama 19. This is the final five seconds. They'll kick it along the artificial turf. And the clock will run out. So Alabama will take a 19-14 lead into the locker room here at Birmingham. Now let's go back to our New York studios for Greg Gumbel. Start the second half. If you're on the kick team, Brent, you have to stay on your lanes. You can't get caught out of your lanes. But look. The blocking from the inside forces people to the outside. The hole opens up, and Saran takes 
the alley right up the middle. Gary Hollingsworth, 21 of 30 for 267 yards and two touchdowns. Again, in to quarterback the Crimson Tide. And this is Stacy, and he is hit by Mark Moore. We should mention as we go, take a look at this game as it gets underway here in the second half. Sir on Stacy came in for Murray Hill, who was taken to the hospital with injured ribs. And I mean, he stepped up to the plate. He took his opportunity right off the bat. And you're right, he was big in the first half, and he's big already here. He took an inside pass from Hollingsworth out of the shotgun and roared 75 yards for a big touchdown in the second quarter. Hollingsworth throws complete to Russell. A first down at the Tennessee 40-yard line with Julian bringing him down. Marion Hobby had a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Here's Lamont Russell, 81. Again, it's a zone. He drifts into the seam between the linebackers and the secondary, and Hollingsworth puts it right between the eight and the one. Lamont Russell with five catches here this afternoon. That one for 15 yards. And a first and 10, it is Stacy. He's wrapped up after a gain of about a yard by Martin Williams and Mark Moore. So we've told you about Stacy. One of the big differences in the game has been the passing yardage. Hollingsworth, Tennessee, though, moved to Kelly as its quarterback, and he has done a fine job. Throwing for all 126 yards after he entered the game. You can see the total offense for the Volunteers in the first quarter, and that the big difference. Oh. There's the quarterbacks. Well, Roger moments. Schultz is shaken up. The center for Alabama and headed to the far side. Fake by Hollingsworth. And makes his way close to that first down marker. Again, he got outside containment, Brent. He reads extremely well. He's mobile. He's got that escapability, but he read the inside containment, and he went outside and picked up good yardage again. Third down and three for Bama. Stacy for the first down. The chains move for Alabama inside the Tennessee 30-yard line. Following the right side between Schultz, he's 6, 269 pounds. Patterson's 271. Chapman, 300 pounds. Big offensive line. Watch him here. Everything's shut down. They block to the left. The run is to the right. Then the linebackers have to fill. On first down. Hollingsworth knocked away. A beautiful move by Preston Warren, who comes up with a big play defensively. Number 21, one of the finest DBs in the SEC. You're right about that. Last year, he had a team high five interceptions. He's among those selected this year as candidates for the Jim Thorpe Award, National Defensive Back Award. Guys that have gotten it in the past, guys like Benny Blades. Second and ten for Bama. From the shotgun. Inside handoff. This time Tennessee ready for Stacy. Ernest Fields wrapping him up. Arkansas, one of the unbeatens. Illinois had that lead throughout most of the first half. And West Virginia exploded. TCU leading the Air Force. And Florida headed New Mexico by a pair. Baylor with a 5 nothing shutout at Texas A&M so far. The Aggies trying to get it back together after the whipping a Houston. Hollingsworth off the fake, buys time, and he drills Stacy. First and 10 to the volunteer 10-yard line. An 18-yard gain. What a receiver Stacy is. 
This is the J.C. standout who scored four times in the Bama opener against Memphis State. He leads the SEC with eight touchdowns. See the fake? Now watch. Again, he drifts under the zone. Here he is at the bottom of your screen. Now he'll just start picking and rolling. Look at him. Hide and seek. Dance outside. Made a great move on Hardy, didn't he? First down. Hollingsworth throws to the end zone. And incomplete. It's ruled in the back of the end zone. Abrams, the intended receiver, back there by the end line. Charlie Abrams, he slides behind everybody in the zone. He just came down and then drifted around behind him. See, he got behind the safety, got behind the corner. Ball a little bit higher. It's a touchdown. I think they lost him in there. They just didn't see him. He snuck down the sideline and came to the back back line of the end zone. Shotgun again on second and ten. Open for the touchdown. Lamond Russell was wide open and Collinsworth drilled it. Attempt the extra point. One was blocked by Tennessee here today. This one is not. A 26 to 14 lead by Bama. I don't care what defense you're in. I don't care how good of a cover guy you are. If a quarterback has that much time, he's going to complete a pass. This is just a post pattern. Look, actually, it's just a strip down and then slide to the ball. Hollingsworth had all day to throw it. Watch Russell to the right of your screen, just comes straight down. Hollingsworth has time, so he skates along with him, drifts into the seam, and he gets the ball between the eight and a one again. When I was Lindsay's spotter in the NFL, and what a gracious Southern gentleman he is, one of the greatest broadcasters of all time. Doyle bangs this one. Cleveland out to the 10. Fumble. Alabama pounces on it. Mike Smith recovers for the Crimson Tide. Mike Smith recovers this, but watch Cleveland. They've put the ball on the ground and lost five fumbles this year, but it's extra effort, tries to cut back here. The height hand just swipes it out, and Smith recovers it. Alabama with a first down at the Tennessee 19 yard line. Stacy cuts back to the right. A brilliant run. That quick step to the right when he saw the daylight. His total offense today is becoming overwhelming for Alabama with Murray Hill out with a rib injury early he has carried the load not only from scrimmage but also as a pass receiver and he has forced Tennessee defenders to miss tackles all game long that's his rushing yardage as a receiver, he's been even more dangerous here today. Well, that's what he's accomplished, and the touchdown was a 75-yarder. That was that inside shovel pass out of the shotgun, which is ruled a pass, and a completed pass for a touchdown in that instance. Again, for the 
first down. Michigan State ties up Illinois. And Oklahoma over Iowa State by a point. Syracuse two touchdowns better than Rutgers right now. And Alabama with the lead and another opportunity with a first and goal ball at the seven. And Stacy getting just inside the five-yard line where his forward progress was stopped. Actually, that's Derek Owens Lassick. The tailback came in for Saran Stacy that time. You know, Stacy is not very large. He's a small tailback, and it reminds you of a running back back in 1955 who had a great game, a fellow by the name of Johnny Majors, who was playing for Tennessee. He was their tailback out of the old single wing. I bet he wishes he has. He had Stacy over there in an orange jersey this afternoon. You're not kidding. Stacy's back in now. Touchdown, Stacy in Alabama. from Roger Schultz, 66, as he got close to the goal line. He's only 5'11", 195 pounds, low center of gravity, good feet, touchdown, Stacy. Well, marvelous news coming out of Oakland in that rescue operation to recover that one gentleman, and frequently in an earthquake, you hear of stories like that. I can remember the child down in Mexico City that was found about a week later. So here, with Tennessee trailing now, 33 to 14, they have run Chuck Webb on the last couple of carries, one for 17 yards. They'll bring the fullback straight ahead on this second down, leaving them with third and short. For the day now, Chuck Webb with 100 yards on 15 carries. That time it was Roland Poles, number 42. There is Webb. So you missed two of his carries while you were away, leaving the Volunteers with a third and two. The ball is out at their own 48-yard line, and Greg Amsler checks into the Tennessee backfield. And off a nice fake by Kelly. Receivers are covered by Alabama. On the move, a throwback, dump off incomplete. And a penalty flag is down here on the near side. We have had very few penalties in this game so far today. You're right about that. As a matter of fact, Tennessee leads the league in fewest penalty yards. They've only had 19 penalties coming into this game, and today they've only had two. It's a 33 to 14 Alabama lead. Both teams unbeaten. Out of personal foul. Personal foul, rough in the pass. Defensive team, automatic first down. A blow to the face. It'll be a late hit out of bounds as Kelly is on the roll. This is the second personal foul against Alabama here today. Actually, the defender had already committed himself, and he put his hands up in his face. It was almost like he was trying to stop his momentum as he was in the air. Nevertheless, first and 10 now for Tennessee. The ball is at the Bama 38-yard line, trying to get something going. Here comes Webb. Beautiful cutback. And Webb. 
across to the Bama 23-yard line with John Mangum bringing him down after 15 yards. That was a great cutback, no question about it. Lee Osman over-pursued the play, so did McCants, number 86. Watch him now. He'll go to the left, to the left of the screen. You want to watch number 42. You want to watch number 86 in red. Here they come now. They run, overrun the play. McCants goes down. You see him up at the top of your screen laying down. He got a stinger in his shoulder. He's a little bit shaken up. I go right at him again. So Tennessee coming right back after surrendering back-to-back -back touchdowns. Now threatening themselves. Kelly on a pitch to Webb, strung out beautifully by the Bama defense that time. A well-defended play running off the option, and Rodney Helton moving in to bring him down. And it will be second and ten. Play coming in from the Tennessee sideline. They were all over that option. The linebacker takes the dive man. The defensive end takes the quarterback. The corner takes the pitch man. They had them all covered. Wildcats with an early lead on Wisconsin. And Webb stops short of the 20. And Therese Davis, number 47, and Ephraim Thomas, number 5. Thomas has played a fine game defensively for the Tide here this afternoon. Broken up a couple. Intercepted one. Helping out on that tackle. So the ball is at the Bama 20 for Tennessee. They must get inside the 15. Big third down for the Volunteers. down. He hits Woods on that far side. Thomas had the coverage and Tennessee keeps the drive alive but there is a penalty marker down. Hold everything. And apparently he's going to go against Tennessee. It is possible that when those two Jets thundered Man, overhead turned up field before the ball was snapped five yards illegal motion offensive team it is very possible that they did not hear well because it appeared to me like Kelly pulled away from the center quickly himself so now it is a third and 11 This time it is dropped by Anza. So a big mistake cost the Volunteers. They were on the move. They would have had a first down inside the Bama 50. Critical mistake. Woods makes a catch with a defender on his back. They get the first. And this is a big drive for Tennessee because they really wanted to come out and score quickly, trailing 33-14. They can't waste much more of that clock. Well, Greg Burke will attempt a 43-yard field goal. This is against the breeze now. On its way, hit it strongly, and he's got it. A 43-yard field goal for Tennessee. And it's 33-17 Alabama with six minutes to go in the third quarter. Webb certainly has done his part running the football. And also they're going to get the wind at their back for the final quarter here in Birmingham. This one bounces away from Jelks after he touched it. He's got it bobbling it, and it'll be down right there inside the five-yard line. So a stir through the Birmingham crowd as Alabama faces horrendous field position as a result of what happened down here on the goal line. Well, this is a former offensive back. He's played in the secondary. He's got sure hands. It just took a funny hop on that carpet. But then when he goes down, and now he's looking for the defenders. He's looking for the cover guys, and he can't pick it up. Finally, he has to just go down on it. Well, Alabama must be careful here. Hollingsworth has been very good at handling the ball, uses his fullback straight ahead to get him a little breathing room, and that is five foot 11 230 pound Martin Houston one of the fullbacks in the Alabama scheme
Tennessee gets a big break on the kickoff like that, they cannot afford to let Alabama just play power football and bang it out of there. They've got to stand right now and stop them here and get good field position. Second down. Huge defensive series. Alabama's punting game has not been sparkling this year. Stacy could not find daylight. And now Tennessee's defense will see what they can do on third down. Let's go to Greg Gumbel in New York. Brent on this one play against New Mexico, Emmett Smith goes 72 yards and sets two school records. He breaks Neil Anderson's record for career rushing yardage, and when he gets to the end zone, it's his 31st career touchdown. Let's go back to Birmingham. All right, Greg, thank you. And Emmett Smith's a great one here on a big third down. Hollingsworth on the roll, incomplete. It bounced. Wanted battle. And Alabama must punt. And Smith on his two punts today has an average of less than 30 yards. So this a moment that the volunteers were waiting for. And you mentioned he's had two blocked. They worked overtime every day, an extra half hour to get him punting this week in practice. I talked to him yesterday. He says he feels comfortable, but he's still not getting the distance. So far, Tennessee has set returns, as they do again here. So they're going to have field position on this. Woods. Tennessee recovered. The ball was on the carpet. The return of 10 yards. So the bodies get untangled there, and what a big recovery that was. That's our next game from South Bend, Notre Dame, and USC. Number one ranked Fighting Irish. Tracy Hayworth is credited with recovering that fumble. A huge moment for the Volunteers. Now, first and ten. Webb, daylight up the middle, and he slams down close to the 30-yard line with Van Treese Davis, the senior from Phoenix City, Alabama, bringing him down. Chuck Webb who has been coming on stronger and stronger as the game progressed. Poles is stood up again by that stiff Alabama defense, and Van Treese Davis again in on that stop. He got a lot of help, too, Brent. From who else? Keith McCants. Tennessee showed strength to the wide side of the field. They went strong that way and then ran back to the short side. But Davis and McCants filled and just stood them up. Tim, a big third and one now for the Volunteers. And Tennessee only two of nine on third down against Bama this afternoon. First down as Poles bolts inside the 10-yard line to the five. Gardner has to wrap him up, but that time the Volunteers step outside left and a 24-yard explosion behind the left side. McCray and Myslinski over there. Alabama keeps moving McCants around. This time McCants comes in and shows blitz. Here he is right here, but when he comes in, he opens up a hole and leaves it to the outside. Now watch McCants. Here comes McCants, no question about it. He's sealed off right now. They close the gate. He takes it straight up, and Poles has plenty of room to run. Alabama gambled and got caught. Watch them seal him off. They seal everybody here to the inside. Poles goes to the outside. Now he's in the secondary. That's a big play for Tennessee. Poles, six foot, 251 pounds, and runs a 4 5 40. I tell you, that's a load. You don't want to let a guy like that get up ahead of steam. You don't want to tackle him anyway. Poles at fullback, and they load up the eye now on first and goal from the five. This is Webb. Can't get to the corner. John Mangum, number 29, up quickly to make the play defensively. Just inside of three minutes, Tennessee moving against the wind, trailing 33-17. The 
Alabama defense with a great record so far in the third quarter coming into this game. There's Poles straight ahead. He's short of the goal line. Spencer Hammond was there. Remember, Tennessee has had a lot of success on the outside, on the corners. You'd want to get Kelly out on the corner where he can either run or pass. Put some pressure out there on McCants. Put some pressure on those corners. Third and goal for the Volunteers. Faces a fourth and goal decision. You want to go for it. You want to go for it here. You need the points. Still got time in the third period, 147. Plenty of time in the game. But you have a line that you've already named the TBA, the Tennessee Valley Authority. You want to challenge them. Hey, this is the chance. You've got to pull it in there. But I can't understand why they aren't going to the corners. Tennessee using a timeout. They want to bring Kelly over. winners are John Manga from Alabama. He's a corporate finance and investment banking major from McGee, Mississippi, and Preston Warren from Tennessee. Preston's a political science pre-law major from Knoxville, Tennessee, and Toyota will donate a check in the amount of $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Well, it is fourth and goal. They're going for it here. A field goal would leave them 13 points out with the fourth period to play. A touchdown puts them in much better position. This is going to be a tough yard for Tennessee. If they don't get it, it'll be catastrophic mentally. Thomas can't scoring the crowd up. They load it. Webb was close. Touchdown, Tennessee. He just barely broke the plane of that goal line against Curry's defense. Let's watch him break that plane. He's coming right at you here. Here's Osmond. Forces it back inside. He gets hit at the goal line. He's in. Absolutely. His shoulders, the ball, everything crossed that plane. No question about it. Best part of that's the official right on top of it. Hey, making the call. And now it's Burke. We could have a great fourth quarter in this one. Could we? Point. There was a flag on the play, however. There is a flag down in the end zone on the extra point. Oh, you go back. Legal participation on the on the extra point trial on the defensive team. Twelve men on the field. Hold it a minute. <laughs> All right. Well. Jimmy Harper says hold it. That's what we'll do. Curry's special teams have broken down a bit here today. They're going to be very concerned about this. He's had an extra point blocked. Now he's had we got two illegal minutes. participation on the defensive team on the kick. We a 15-yard penalty on the kickoff. Oh wow! The extra point is good. That's big too, Brent, because yes. Tennessee has had Alabama backed up. The Volunteers have had good field position, and once again they get a 15-yard advantage. And we go back again to that blocked extra point early in this game. Instead of a 10-point lead right now, it's a 9. So you're set up for a touchdown and a field goal to beat you in the final quarter. Had a great visit with Bill Curry up on campus at Tuscaloosa this week. And he said his main concern coming into this game, special teams. They've had a couple of punts blocked. The special teams haven't really played up to par. That was his concern. Tennessee will attempt to bury Alabama and then hold defensively and force Bama to punt. Alabama's punting game, one of the weakest parts of their overall game this season. How about an onside kick? Would you gamble? No, because you'd give them too good a field position if you'd fail. So he chips it up short. And 
it is Stacy is down at the 17 yard line and Sean Walker out of College Park Georgia bringing him down after a three yard return your question now about Sirhan Stacy is his durability with Hill out with the injured ribs he's had to carry the entire load as Tennessee marks 38 yards in seven plays following that punt in three minutes and it's a 33 24 game late in the third he's all alone there at setback it's up to him and nothing doing that time that's Walker again those two meeting regularly that's what brought him down on the kickoff Now what Curry has to avoid is getting too conservative and sitting on this nine point lead Arkansas holding off the horns there West Virginia is going to win again today and Baylor still shutting out the Aggies second down and ten Hollingsworth off the play fake far side Wimbley hey what a punch of a catch that was. Again, Hollingsworth with good bat ball handling. Watch this right in here. That's Hollingsworth. Play action stops. That freezes the linebacker for a second. Now watch Wembley stretch out. Oh, I'm not sure he had it. That ball may have hit the ground. I think it might have double dribbled it a little bit. There. <laughs> <laughs> they aren't going to take it back. 13 yards. A game that doesn't need instant replay. They let the men on the field make the decisions. The throw to Hollingsworth. The Marco is complete. Preston Warren banging him out of bounds. Oh, I tell you, this Hollingsworth is some cool customer. Warren made the tackle. He's going to his senior captain right here. Marco Battle. Shows strength to one side, roll to the back side. He's got good feet. Throws on the run right off that back pivot foot, just like a baseball guy. That's why he's playing on the baseball team. Well, a pitcher. He's pitched 38 passes today and completed 26 of them for 330 yards and three touchdowns. Here's the workhorse, Stacy. He gets the first down for Alabama. And the ball out to the Bama 42 yard line with the seconds ticking away here in the third quarter. And Mr. Hardy, who's been relatively quiet this quarter, comes up to make that stop. Majors hoping that the volunteers can hold high snap out of the shotgun. There is Stacy. He bounces off a tackle. <laughs> sort of bumper pulled his way out to about the 46 yard line. And that'll do it. The end of the third quarter. It's Bama 33, the volunteers 24. And we'll return after this message. And a word from your local station most famous native sons he is one and Stacy breaks straight ahead let's see Lynchburg Tennessee Johnny Majors and the other one would have to be Jack Daniels <laughs> <laughs> oh, Johnny Majors in his 13th year at Tennessee he's hoping for the lucky 13 he's a good one professionally tough personally emotional won a national championship and a Heisman Trophy for Tony Dorsett got robbed of one by Charlie Callahan as a player. I never credit Paul Horning with that high school. I always give it to the PR man from Notre Dame. All right, third down now for Bama. We start the final quarter with Andy here so far. Incomplete on the swing pass to the far side. Kelly Days delivering the pop over there. And Bama is forced to punt. Now remember, it's only a nine-point lead. Alabama has struggled here with its punting game. Now at midfield, this might be the time when Tennessee elects to go after one. They have set the return so far all day. They've changed punters, Brent. That's Ward. Yes, it is. They're going to try a new punter. They're going to let this one bounce. Almost hit him. It may have hit him. Alabama says it did. I thought he jumped over it, but let's see what happens here. Thomas Woods 
Thomas Woods was trying to down the ball. He didn't want it to take a big Bama hop, and he got over on it, and it almost touched him. I'll tell you, artificial turf, you got to be so careful with punted balls. You know, and this field has a high crown, so everything coming off the middle is going downhill. That's very dangerous. Oh, Woods was over top of it, just barely. Now, taking over Tennessee on their own 25-yard line. There's McCants wrapping Amsler up that time. So Amsler has shown us a little fullback, a little tailback, some work as a downfield receiver. He has been a very versatile performer here for the Volunteers. It's going to be a second and seven for Kelly and Tennessee. They're down by nine. Sell out as you can imagine here in Legion Field. Amsler swinging out, and as a receiver, he busts out for a Tennessee first down. The breeze is at Tennessee's back. Johnny Majors and the Volunteers getting it for the final 15 minutes, and that could well turn out to be the difference if they can rally here. protection throws incomplete and let's check with Greg Gumbel for an update Brad at Bloomington Indiana for on his third try from the one yard line Indiana's Anthony Thompson scores his second touchdown of the day the 57th of his fine career he trails only Pitts Tony Dorsett and Army's Glenn Davis in that category let's go back to Birmingham all right, Greg, and here it is, 33-24, Alabama. Andy Kelly, the relief quarterback, has done a whale of a job against Bama. Running the option, and he pitches it out, and Spencer Hammond has it covered defensively for Bama as Webb, the ball carrier. It's third and seven coming up for Tennessee. As time, receivers are covered on the near side, goes far side, incomplete. Cleveland. The best defender on that play was the side judge. The official got in the way, blocked the view of the receiver. Now it is Kent Elmore, and with this wind at his back, he could boom one. He had an 81 yard punt against Vanderbilt. it up high for Stacy at the 17 and they swarm all over could have saved himself a hit with a fair catch he let Hardy have a free shot on him you know what Elmore says if I can get a hang time of 4.5 or better I've got guys that can run four five forties they're gonna be down there that's what happened that time he gave my hang time of 4.75 Alabama looking for a ball control drive. Tennessee desperately needing a big play from one of their defensive players. And Hollingsworth on first down throwing. Incomplete. It'll be second and ten. Well, they've lived by the first down pass all game long, and apparently they're not going to stop here. It's been a balanced attack, though. At halftime, it was almost even, pass versus run. They've been that way all year. It's a very balanced attack. The wind rippling the back of Hollingsworth jersey. He had a 70-yard touchdown pass going into it, but it was out of the shotgun with a shovel to Stacy. And it 
there's movement there, you could see. side of the Alabama line. Uh, illegal procedure, illegal snap. So you know why the crowd doesn't like that? Because they thought it was Tennessee that jumped. They did, but there's no contact made. They are allowed to get back. Then Schultz came out, fired out of his center position. He made contact. He's all sides. Good call. Watch the Tennessee guys. He'll jump, get a little antsy in there. See? Oh! Now here comes Schultz firing out of the center. Ball back to the 12 and from the shotgun. Collinsworth drops it over the middle to Stacy. Or he shakes that first tackler time after time. Down at the 19-yard line, well short of a first down. This is going to be third and long. And oh, how the Alabama coaching staff would dearly love to have about 10 more yards here before they're forced to punt. You know, a lot of folks, Brent, might be saying, hey, where'd this guy Saran Stacy come from? He's a junior. I've never heard of him in Alabama. He's a transfer from Coffeeville Junior College in Kansas. seven for that first down. Hollingsworth. And he hits his tight end, Russell. He's got it. A big third down pass. And Tracy Smith forces him out of bounds after 19 yards, and the chains move. And what a huge play that was. Well-designed play, too. Tennessee goes to the nickel. Look at all these defensive backs. And they'll drag him all the way underneath here across the field. See, here comes Russell underneath, gets lost in traffic, and comes across. Very well-designed play. Tracy Smith never got to him. Now a penalty against Tennessee. 15 yards because of a personal foul is tacked on against the Volunteers. Bull moves to the Tennessee 46. What a costly 15-yarder that is. up the middle. Now let's go back to a special report from CBS News on the earthquake victim who's been found. And while you were hearing that good news finally from the San Francisco Bay Area, Alabama keeping the ball, they now have a second and four inside the Tennessee 30-yard line. Again, this is second down and four yards to go. And here is Sirhan Stacy. And he has been sensational here today. First down for Alabama. They lead Tennessee 33-24. Ten minutes left in the fourth quarter. And Bama digs itself out of a deep hole and continues to march down the field. And this, of course, could be the drive that finally puts the Volunteers away. Stacy has carried 25 times for 91 yards, and he also has another 152 yards receiving. 250-yard day coming up for Mr. Stacy. This time it's the fullback Houston banging inside the 15-yard line into the arms of Ernest Fields. Brent, not only is this drive effective as far as gaining ground and putting themselves in scoring position, but they've eaten up over three minutes of the clock here in the fourth period, and that is crucial. Checking in now for the Crimson Tide is the very versatile John Casimus, number 33, one of the wide receivers, a finance major, fine student. This time they stretch him out and he turns it up before Kelly Days and Preston Warren bring him down. With Murray Hill out with injured ribs and now Stacy slowed up a little bit by that tackle. Look at the kind of day he's had. Wow. I think he just wants a breather. Might have had the wind knocked out of him a little bit. Derek Owens. And now they hand off to the fullback straight ahead. 
And there's a lineman shaken up for Alabama. Eight twenty-five. The clock stopped at eight twenty-six. And thirty-three twenty-four. Well, the injured player is being tended to. Looks like Trent Patterson, the right guard, 5'11, 271 pound junior. Now, oh, well, we've got that injury timeout. We'll break away and come right back. 505 yards total offense here today. Owens Lassick continuing to tailback. They fake to him. And they throw the swing out of bounds on the near side. Preston Warren and Ernest Fields with coverage. The receiver was Kevin Turner, the fullback. And the clock down to 8:14, a nine-point Bama lead, and Tennessee looking for one of those huge plays on defense as Sirhan Stacy returns to the Alabama lineup. And Bill Curry closing in on one of the biggest wins of his coaching career at Alabama. Against Tennessee here this afternoon. And Pickens is down at the 28-yard line. Greg, I'd be shocked if the Fighting Irish and the Trojans got into it in that tunnel leading up to the locker rooms. Brent, something we don't like to see but must report in shades of last year's Miami-Notre Dame game. Southern Cal and Notre Dame players clashed coming onto the field and brawled for several minutes before finally being separated. That game still to come this afternoon here on CBS. Let's go back to Birmingham. I don't want to make light of that, but they need a new entrance to the visitors' locker room. <laughs> on first down, Kelly is smothered as he throws it back and it's intercepted. was the receiver. He had come into the game and took the snap. But I mean, Kelly was hammered. Watch the top right hand part of your screen. Henton just couldn't adjust. Kelly rolls way right. There's the pressure. It makes the ball fly, kind of floated on him a little bit. Sterling couldn't adjust, and then the interception was made by Spencer Hammond. He was actually beaten on the play, but because it was underthrown, he made the, the interception. Here's why the pro scouts say that Keith McCants may be the finest linebacker in college football. I mean, he got in on Kelly, and he delivered a major league blow that time when he took him down. He runs a 4-5-40. They put him in the same conversation with Derek Thomas, Cornelius Bennett. Wow. First and ten. And this Bennett team on the roll. They are taking dead aim at New Orleans in the Sugar Bowl here today. Keith McCants is a big guy on campus, but I have to tell you this. He's not allowed to play basketball in the Coliseum anymore. He went in there in the offseason, had a couple of slam dunks, shattered two backboards, shattered three in high school, so they said, that's all. You cannot play basketball here anymore. I think that's a school record, two shattered backboards. Here today, Tim, 11 tackles and two sacks for the big fella. And Stacy. Stacked up, 
That's probably the first time today that I've seen one tackler alone stick with him and bring him down. Dwayne Dotson, number 33, a freshman out of Hendersonville, Tennessee, wraps him up, and the clock now moves down toward the seven minute mark. Texas up ahead of unbeaten Arkansas. Well, that would give Bama a chance to really jump up. Collinsworth has broken Scott Hunter's record for completions here today, handing off on third down. Collinsworth has completed 31 of 45 passes for 371 yards. That breaks Scott Hunter's record as he heads to the sideline. He has done a sensational job here today. And Alan Ward comes in to punt again. This is the biggest weakness we can see with the Alabama game, Tim, is that their punting game is not up to what it once was. They'll let this one roll down. Tennessee running out of time on the short end of a 40-24 score right now. That punt, just a 21-yarder. Oh, it was a roll tide day here in Birmingham. Kelly after taking that hit still in the game he's out of Dayton Tennessee he's a fine punter too and he's showing some fine ability here today that one knocked away by McCants and you know we've been seeing those special reports from Leslie Stahl and for the second time in less than a month We've seen the devastation and loss brought about by a natural disaster. And here this afternoon, they made the appeal for all fans who wanted to make donations, uh, which would go out to the earthquake victims and also to those who are victimized by a couple of terrible hurricanes, Hugo and Jerry, and some floods up in Kentucky, that they contact their appropriate agency by reaching your newspaper in your area. And certainly, we urge everybody to make contributions because we've been hit with a couple of major disasters here in the last few weeks. Coverage of that completed pass by Terrence Cleveland. I know that down here in the southeast, they have made a point of raising funds and clothes and food for those people over in the hurricane wreck Charleston, South Carolina area. And now appeals are being sent out for the earthquake victims. So it is third down now for Tennessee. Off a no huddle, hitting Cleveland on a quick pop. And it's a first down for Tennessee. And hey, this guy, Keith McCants, he can cover pass receivers too he sure can he's 6'5 256 pounds we said he runs like a, a tailback you know when he first got here at Alabama the coaches said he had trouble harnessing his ability because he was undisciplined running from sideline to sideline but once he got some discipline and started to read defenses boy he's a superstar great completion that time terrific concentration on the part of Mark Adams a couple of defenders there, including Thomas, on a 19-yard gain, but there's a personal foul call against Alabama. They're going to tack on some yardage on this one. Tennessee with 5.13 to go, and a quick touchdown would still leave them nine points back, although certainly, certainly Johnny, if he hits here, will go for two. It is certainly in this game. First of all, on the defensive team to Clyde. Clyde be first down white. I just point out that because of the two point conversion in college football, this baby is not over. Two touchdowns and two two point conversions, and you've got a tie. But you have to qualify it and say Tennessee needs that quick explosion. They sure do. If Kelly can uh, somehow get one quickly against the tide. And a play. The umpire said that I believe timeout had been called by Alabama. Is that what I'm seeing down there right now? He's going to go over and check with his umpire right now. That looked like a practice drill. One yeah. on one. Everybody stopped and they just watched it. Answer. Timeout called by Red Team. Yeah, that's exactly what it was. The umpire had called timeout, but didn't stop the snap. So Bama uses one of its timeouts. So we've still got five minutes and ten seconds of football to go here, and we'll be right back. Game began. His handler said, "I got to go outside and find some real grass for Smokey." Here's Kelly 
back looking for a receiver under pressure and wisely getting rid of it and not risking an interception or taking a sack. That is a great play. Willie Wyatt came through, and rather than just take the sack and lose yardage, he just wasted it down and threw it away. That's a tremendous play by Kelly. We haven't called his name much, but watch 98. That's Willie Wyatt. Outstanding all-SEC middle guard. Here he comes now. He comes through. Kelly sees him, has his wits about him, and dumps it off rather than take the sack. That's a great play by Andy Kelly. Second and 10. Tennessee with the ball at the Alabama 38-yard line. Over the middle, complete. Amsler battles his way to the 30. Keith McCants there defensively. And this is going to leave Tennessee with a third and short for a first down. They'll go without the huddle. They need two yards here on third down. Obviously, they'll go on fourth if they don't get it. Woods looking in to hear the play being called by Kelly. They get the first down and then some inside the 25-yard line and Keith McCants now roaming all over the field brings him down. But Kelly looked in that the audible was to see where McCants was. He watched where McCants was lining up. They had Von Reeves, another tight end on the wing. They moved him up as an extra blocker to, to work on McCants and that's when they ran the play and popped it. Now it is a first and 10 for Tennessee. 16 on the clock. Kelly for Amsler off his hands incomplete. Greg Amsler, who has been very efficient as a pass receiver in this game, had that one thrown perhaps a little bit high to him. And Georgia. The Dogs lost a tough one to Tennessee in their last outing a couple of weeks ago. That was Tennessee's last outing. They had a week off prior to the Alabama game. Kelly now, since coming off the bench, is 12 of 25 for 180 yards and one touchdown. 4-12 remaining in the game. Second down and 10. Tennessee looking for that quick scoring strike. Quickly to the near side and Pickens, and he's free. Inside the five-yard line before Thomas would trip him up gets credited with that tackle and now it is a first and goal at 406 on a 21 yard gain and the majors is already talking about one thing they're going to go without a huddle here majors is talking about one thing he needs to go for the two if they get it they've got to quickly set that play they touchdown tennessee carl pickens and now a very important for Majors and the Volunteers. Boy, Pickens may have gotten away with a push there. See if he doesn't push Ephraim Thomas. Here it is, just a timing pattern. They run the fade. Now, there's Pickens, push Thomas, now comes back inside of him to make the touchdown. Doesn't matter, no flags. Now, what will they come up with here as a play? It is 40 to 30. It's sitting on 10 right now. They'll send three wide receivers to the right. Frequently, on a two-point conversion, they will run a pick play in college football. They roll in the direction of the wideouts. The throw, and a great defensive play by Gardner. Gardner knocks it away, and it stays at 10. What a huge play that was. Absolutely. Charles Gardner saw him sliding into the flat. If you watched the formation when they came out, they went straight to three receivers to the right side. They were trying to flood the zone on that side. There's the pass, and Gardner is right with Woods from the time the ball was snapped and knocked it down. Big play for Alabama. Now we're in the onside kick mode as far as Tennessee is concerned. So you will note that Alabama will probably bring nine men up very close to the 45-yard line, and they will put some wide receivers and some backs in that second line there, fellows with good hands, so they don't fumble the ball. It's a 10-point game at 359, and Tennessee now must have that big defensive turnover or a successful onside kick. But the key there is Alabama's plus three in a turnover, turnover ratio. They get it more than they give it. They don't turn it over often. Bunching together now. 
Ball has to travel 10 yards. Free ball. Indicating they're going to the left. Let's see. They do. I don't think it went far enough. It's recovered by Tennessee. Did it hit a Tennessee player first? Yeah, before it went to 10. They're marking it yeah, at the 44-yard line. Now hold on while they sort this out. Lee Wood got down on the ball. <laughs> it's not a statue, folks. That's a live shot. <laughs> yeah. Young man, David Bennett. And it hit the Tennessee player, I believe. Let's see if they sort this out. Yes, take a look at see it. See if it goes to full 10. Damn a ball. You'll see it come There's right up five. on his hip. Right there, yeah, the it, right yeah. angle. Yeah, it, or it, the it right hit ankle. 22 rather. in the ankle. That was Floyd Miley. It hit. So Bama gets the ball right there at the 44 with 358. <laughs> 40 to 30. The only thing that can save Tennessee now is a big Alabama turnover. And Stacy. Battles for four inside the 40. Bradley bringing him down for the volunteers. So Alabama only three minutes and 40 seconds away now from staying unbeaten. Seventy points scored and when you look at the scores recently in this great rivalry high scoring games here's Stacy who's had a great afternoon inside the 35 yard line and that clock continues to run Tennessee with two timeouts left trailing it by 10 Alabama has not had a turnover today Stacy with 31 carries for Alabama, 109 yards and one touchdown. What do they say? That ball's not heavy. 31, just let him go. Melt the clock now. Fullback, Houston, straight ahead. Daryl Hardy credited with the stop defensively. Clock running toward the 2.30 mark on Johnny Majors. Tennessee will take a timeout here. Tennessee's got to start tackling the ball. They have to just take in chances. When you tackle the ball, obviously, you give up the wraparound, and the guy could break something big on you. But at this point, you've got to get that ball back. He's still very much in it. He's a creator of clocks. He knows how much time's up there and what they need. Timeout, Tennessee. And of course, after this one, USC and Notre Dame, the top ranked Fighting Irish. Certainly, if Alabama wins this one, they want to take a look at the Fighting Irish. Who knows? Maybe they can get them to come to New Orleans, play on New Year's Day. You never know what's going to happen with those four teams up above. Brent, as you mentioned, if Alabama wins this, they still have a good, strong schedule yet to play including Auburn, which will be played at Auburn this year. A lot of the Alabama people bought season tickets for Auburn just to get into that one game. Yeah, Alabama loves going to Auburn, don't they? <laughs> They've looked forward to that for a couple of years. Haven't they? That game has always been played here. Oh, that's a classic. That one's dead serious. Second down and eight. Fullback again. Clock running down now toward the 2.30 mark. Tennessee down to its last timeout. And they use it. So Tennessee runs out of timeouts at 2.29. Boy, this would have been some 2.30 if that two-point conversion had been successful. Now Alabama. Hoping to get a first down here. Great win for Bill Curry. Anybody who has followed college football, and certainly Alabama, knows the pressure he's been under down here. 
Oh, he sure has. And then Goody Ingram, the new athletic director, is here, keeping a close eye on things, trying to get everybody positive down here in the state of Alabama. It hasn't been positive over the last couple of years. Great numbers by Hollingsworth. Breaking Scott Hunter's record with the 31 completions here today. You have to wonder, here's a guy that's a senior. Where has he been? How come he had to play? Right. <laughs> Shotgun. That exploded for 75 yards early on, and it gets the biggest first down against the clock. That'll keep it running, and Tennessee can't stop it. They'll move the chains, and it'll stop momentarily. And then Bama can start it back up and run it out. First down against the Tennessee defense on the part of Alabama here today. Great offensive show by the Crimson Tide, and the 10 game winning streak of Tennessee is about to come to an end. And Houston battles his way, and the clock continuing to run down. Ironically, that 10 game winning streak, the last loss was against Alabama, October 15th, just over one year ago, and they come back and the tide takes them again. Texas with a 10 point lead, so two unbeatens could fall today Tennessee and Arkansas. And you'll find out about Notre Dame next. Emmett Smith, big touchdown today for Florida, and AM being shut out. South Carolina leading easily, and here it's Bama up by 10. They came into this game favored by four. He's been their workhorse. So hands Stacy. Well they certainly did not miss Bobby Humphrey here this afternoon did they he went into the NFL signing with Denver. He's played extremely well for the Broncos so far this year and here's the young man at Alabama got out of JC he's from Alabama grew up in the state and he got his chance today because of the injury suffered by Murray Hill Hill was taken out in the first half because of a rib injury he went to a hospital for x-rays Stacy still going touchdown Sirhan Stacy, two rushing and two on pass receptions. That's his second four touchdown performance of the season. And it's a big happy birthday to head coach Bill Curry, 47 years old today. And up on that scoreboard, there's a big 47 points. So how about that? What a way to celebrate your 47th birthday. We'll be right back. Tennessee had not yielded a single touchdown rushing this season and today Alabama stings them for three on the ground four by Stacy as you mentioned he now has 11 for the year and leads the Southeast Conference this may be the most impressive win yet of Bill Curry's coaching career he has not yet lost a game to Tennessee and of course the big obstacle he faces in the state I don't believe he's beaten Pat Dye in Auburn yet, has he? No, it? and it even gets worse. Usually that game's in Birmingham, but as we mentioned, it goes up there. Don't be so depressed. No, I think it's just a challenge. <laughs> I don't mean to be pessimistic. They're going to play it. <laughs> <laughs> and the volunteers, they'll come back next week. Let's see. they got to go to Baton Rouge. Isn't that what I saw on their schedule? You've got it. Boy, he's been struggling down there, Mike Archer. Well, they're loyal fans. will regroup. They'll get over this along about Tuesday afternoon. And Start thinking about the Tigers. I'm going to tell you something. Alabama can't look at Auburn yet. They've got to go up to Happy Valley next week. Hey, play Joe Penn Paterno. State. 
That's our guy Joe Paterno up there, huh? Yeah, nice to see Blair Thomas is playing again. Sure was nice being down here with you, Tim. I'll talk to you tomorrow when you're in Kansas City. It's been fun, Brent. Oh, we got to do it again sometime. Uh, you can't beat the Southeastern Conference football on a Saturday afternoon. Let me tell you. I can play it. Nice show by this young man right here, Kelly. I enjoyed watching it today. And he fires another. I want to tell you something about Pickens. Was Thomas Woods was that receiver. But they've got another receiver on this team, Pickens, who's going to be some standout. You know, that's a school that has turned how many this decade into the NFL out of Tennessee? Five first picks just in the 80s. Wow. Alabama on the third Saturday in October comes away with a victory. As Gardner intercepts in the end zone. Sing happy birthday to the coach.